<clears throat> as I was uh, talking with Brother Mike about the message, and uh, he told me, he said, just whatever you feel like. Well, in the time where we are right now, I kind of thought, we need a new start. And that's the type of top, uh, topic of the message. But uh, uh, we begin with a, a case wherein Israel was having a great problem. Uh, they needed to be greatly encouraged. And so we go to the Valley of Dry Bones. Uh, chapter 37 of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord was upon me, Ezekiel said, and he brought me out by the Spirit. And the Lord, and the Lord had set me in the middle of a valley, and it was full of dry bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. And he asked me, he says, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O oh, sovereign God, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you'll come to life and I'll attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin and I'll put breath in you and you'll come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone, and I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and, bre and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them, and they came to life and stood on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, O oh, my people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I'll settle you in your own land. Then you'll know that I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it, declares the Lord. That's a great passage of scripture as we consider it for our uh, background of the fact of, uh, have you ever had the feeling that you needed a, a jump start? Uh, I can remember when uh, Marge and I were at the Bee Sweet Orchard and we had finished our purchase and went to the car and when we, uh, you turned the key then. <laughs> and, and nothing happened, you know. And my goodness, now what can we do? Uh, we're here at the Bee Sweet Orchard in Long Way. And uh, I had some uh, old jumper cables in the back. Uh, they came with a kit when I got the car. I got them out and, and they were just too fine a wire for to start that car. But there was a gentleman in a truck next to us and he had a heavy pair of cables and, and he came over and, and said, can I help? And I said, yeah, we, we need to jump the car to get started. He said, just a minute. He brought the cables over and, and started the car with the cables. And, and I said, well, what do I owe you? He said, oh, nothing. He said, I'm just glad to help. You know, sometimes we need that jump start in our life. Uh, that, that kind of, uh, of life that uh, is there for the Lord, you know. Uh, the life was what life was like uh, before you became a Christian was dull, you know. But we realize that when come becoming a Christian, we started a new life in Christ. Uh, we were standing still, kind of drifting along 
through life and, the, and no direction, no real purpose. And we, we just need to hear the word of the Lord. Nicodemus, <coughs> as we read in the scriptures, uh, he heard the word of the Lord from John 3. When John, God said to this man named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council, he came to Jesus at night and said, uh, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Made anew, a new start. Uh, getting on with life. And over again, several times, he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And so we realize that when we walk in this new life with Christ, we are alive in Christ, spiritually reborn. I wandered, uh, a song says, I wandered so aimlessly, life filled with sin, I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord. I saw the light, and we, we need to really see that light and praise the Lord together. We need to get jump-started um, to get going in this time of this great pandemic that we're uh, so involved in, and we feel like we are just being crushed, and we, we find time at home alone, and, and many, many are feeling this desperation, but we need this new start. Uh, be encouraged and strengthened. Three things. We must plug into the power of prayer. Trusting in the Lord. And then we must hear the word of the Lord. Ezekiel heard the word of the Lord. And we must hold fast to the Lord and to his word. Uh, Ezekiel held fast to that. He completed exactly he said, he did that which God commanded. And so we were doing what God commanded as we come together. So prayer, uh, our failure is to trust in the Lord. Uh, we need to realize in Numbers 21, 4 and 5, while in the desert wandering, Israel complained to Moses uh, about many things. Why have you brought us out into this desert? And uh, there's no bread and there's no water, and we distest this miserable, miserable food called manna. The Lord heard and sent poisonous snakes, and the poisonous snakes bit them, and the, many of them died. And then they cried out to Moses, and Moses, pray, Moses, pray that the Lord will take the snakes away. The snakes got Israel's attention. I'll tell you, this pandemic has gotten our attention, too. Will we worship? Will we praise the Lord? Will we pray? Will we continue to serve? You know, he's gotten, it's our attention. But Moses was told, make a, a, a snake of bronze and put it upon a pole. And when the people look and see the snake, the bronze snake on the pole, if they're bitten, they will not die. He had a decision. It was up to them. If they were bitten, look at the snake on the pole. You know, they had that decision to make. Sometimes tragedy comes to get our attention. Sickness, loss of a job, problems with children, or nature's hurricane, tornado, or whatever. <clears throat> and now this pandemic. And uh, one year, almost since March, we've been dealing with this pandemic, going through it. And it's been devastating to the church in many places where they do not have any worship. And we're just praising God that we're still coming together and worshiping and serving Almighty God. And realize how important it is that we are here praying for the remainder of the congregation. Of course, there are some in the parking lot, some are going to see it on TV. But we realize we're here in fellowship, praising the Lord. We're wearing our mask. We're keeping distance. But at the same time, we're, we're just thinking, we're here to praise Almighty God and trust in Him with our powerful thing called prayer. Sometimes prayer seems like 
Is it effective? Well, in James 3.16, said the prayer of a righteous person avails much. It is effective and it is powerful. So when I, we turn our eyes toward Almighty God and say, Our Father in Heaven, realize that is a powerful moment. It may be a short prayer like Nehemiah made when he appealed to the king, <clears throat> Cyrus, to go back to Israel and rebuild the wall. He just prayed, oh Lord, make me effective. You know, it was a short prayer, but still, prayer short or long, it's powerful when we trust in the Lord. Then the second thing, we say, well, how? Uh, well, hear the word of the Lord. Listen to his word, what he says. There's so much out there to get our attention and it's an all day, all night thing going on around us. In fact, we, we see this cell phone that is so important to people. Some put it under their pillow, I guess, and wait for it to ring through the night. <clears throat> Wake up in the morning and check to see if you've got any text messages or whatever on it. You've got, you got to think through it. And Facebook, so much nonsense. Uh, once in a while, I... Uh, Margie lets me see her, her iPad and I scroll through Facebook and uh, what people put on there, they ought to keep to themselves, you know. Uh, we realize, but we're in a day when it said, look at me and the gossip is going on all around us, but we need to hear the word of the Lord. That's where the power is. That's where the strength is. And uh, the Ethiopian was reading the scripture in Acts 8, the 8th chapter. And Philip came along and attached himself to the chariot, if you remember the story. And Philip said, do you understand what you're reading? How can I accept someone would teach me? We need to be taught the word of Almighty God. And he taught uh, that word unto him from Isaiah that is all about Jesus Christ being the Messiah and coming to be the Savior. And in that, the Ethiopian said, Here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? If you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. So we got to challenge the world today to believe in Jesus Christ. We need to give everything we can. So we need to hear these familiar words, particular words, Sometimes we hear them in a song, like the song uh, says, them bones, them bones gonna rise again, them bones, them bones gonna rise again, you know. Well, that goes back to Ezekiel, when Ezekiel heard this prophecy of the sovereign God. But we're hearing word today from the Almighty God. We're hearing uh, John 5, 24, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned, but has crossed over from death into life. It's like dead bones rising up and breath being put into us, and we then serve the Lord and cause our thoughts to be. But men are dull and do not hear too well. I remember in the song, The Greatest Story Ever Told, that says they're uh, given a revelation, but men as dull as stone cannot understand. The world is dull today to hearing the almighty powerful word of God. But we realize how important as it is that we have ears to hear and we need to hear the word of the Lord. Romans 10, <clears throat> 17 says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. The sovereign God has spoken to us. John taught, if you remember, John the Baptist, John Matthew 3, 1, says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then Jesus came right behind him with the word again, Matthew 4, 17, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And Peter in Acts 2, 38, he said, he said repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ and uh, for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, 
we find that's new breath in us. That's new strength in us. The spirit to guide us and to comfort us as we go through life today. So we are challenged. So let the Lord with the power of his word provide the jumper cables so you can hear the word of the Lord. How can they call upon him of whom they've not believed? How can they believe with, uh, unless they hear the word? How can they hear the word unless they have someone to teach them or preach unto them? And we realize that this congregation is sending Brandon Belton to Roanoke Bible College, Matthew, in order to prepare to preach the gospel message. And you are supporting that. You are sending. It says, how can they preach unless they are sent? And we need to be willing to send them into the study of the word so they can preach the gospel and they can be heard today, the sovereign word on, of God. <clears throat> you know, this jumper cable thing, I, you know, a scripture that came to my mind was Galatians 3, 7, said, you are running a good race. Who cut in on you? You know, who stopped you from running? Well, if we got, someone got in there and stopped us from running, let us get back. Let us get back in prayer, back in hearing the word and so solving this great problem that we have. We need to, in our, our day, realize that Jesus Christ, he was there all the time. So we need to hold fast to the Lord, hold fast to the word and realize that because of me, he who stands firm to the end will be saved, Matthew 10, 22. We need to remain faithful to the very end. In Revelation 2, 10, it says, be ye faithful even unto death, and you'll gain the crown of life. So we realize we need to be faithful, holding on to the word. Trust in the Lord, hear the word, hold fast to the word, until the very end. Don't give up. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 13, 16, 13, it says, be on your guard and firm in the faith. Be of good courage. Be strong. Do everything in love. What challenge these things are to us. As God is speaking to us, uh, the sovereign God has this word to speak to us. Whatever happens, Conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you, Paul said, or hear about you in my absence, I'll know that you are standing firm in one spirit, in one mind, continuing as one person for the faith of the gospel. That's unity. We're united together as one body, one church, proclaiming the word of God. So we realize how important it is that we continue to serve the Lord. But sometimes we need a jump start. Uh, we need a change of clothes. Uh, we need a change that will take place. You know, we're dirty at work. We come home. We want to change clothes. You know, well, we talk about changing clothes. <clears throat> the prodigal son in Luke 15, 22 <clears throat> came home to his father, and the father requests, bring the best robe and put it on him. A change of clothes. And we have exchanged our unrighteous clothes to be clothed with the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 3.27 teaches us, all of you who have been baptized into Christ, you have clothed yourself with Christ. We're clothed with Christ. What great clothing. It's, it's more precious than anything we can think of, this precious change of clothes. Revelation 3, 5 says, he who overcomes will be like them, be dressed in white, like the church at Sardis, and have their name, not have their name blotted out of the book of life. Dressed in white, uh, clothed with Christ. We realize that when people see us, they're going to see Jesus. When they see us, they need to see Jesus. We're clothed with him. 
we're walking in this world. So we need to hate the clothes that are stained with the world's corruption. We need to keep ourselves unspotted from this world and serving him. So we need to stay connected to the power prayer. We need to realize that we need to trust in the Lord. We need to hear his word. And it's not just words to us, but it's the sovereign word of the Lord. When he said to Nicodemus, you must be born again, that was God speaking to him. And we need to realize it is God speaking to us through the word. Let us be faithful. Let us be true. Let us trust in Almighty God. We're in a day when we realize we're in a pand pandemic, you know, type of thought. And Paul said uh, concerning the fact that he said, when I preach to others, I need to be careful unless I be a castaway. But before that, he said, I do not run like other men. I do not like fight like someone beating the air. He said, I beat my body daily and make it a slave to me. So that after I have preached unto others, I will not be a castaway. So we realize how important it is. We're teaching others. We're showing others. And we need to be faithful to the end so that we will not be a castaway. Finally, I think we need to think about putting on the full armor of God so we can resist the attack of the devil. Putting on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit. Put on the full armor of God. Jesus, he was there all the time. And he's still there. If you need to accept him as your Lord and as your Savior, he is there. If you need to rededicate your life to him, he is still there. And he's been there all the time, waiting patiently in line for you to make your decision about Jesus Christ. And if we, as Christians, we felt like we're slipping a little back, sliding a little back, let us be recharged, recharged, jump started, listen to the word, hear the word, pray unto the almighty God and give your life back to him in totality. We need to be firmly committed to our Lord and to our Savior. As I close, I just want to thank we're in a pandemic time. And it seems like it's coming even greater, m more uh, viruses are coming down the pipe, more or less, uh, that are stronger. But we realize we have a God who is stronger than everything that is coming. We have a God who is greater than anything that can be thrown at us. And this world is being in turmoil in many different ways. And we need to realize we have a faith, we have a strength, we have a power through prayer and hearing the word and trusting in God that the world cannot take away from us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we're thankful and we praise you, Father, as we come uh, to the thought of people thinking about Jesus Christ being their Lord and Savior. And our Heavenly Father, we uh, realize how important it is to say, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, the one and true living God, the only living God, the sovereign God who gave us this word. Dry bones, will they live again? Church, can we reassemble? Can we gather back together? Can we become strong again? Yes, yes, yes. Trusting in the Lord. We can become that strong body of Christians serving and praising him. We give thanks even now as we come before you, almighty God, and ask for your blessing in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen.